So we are back up and running in 2026 and we're running our solo mining rigs and this is the Nerd Octax and the Zyber 8 and then the two Nerd QXs up there still on so we've turned them both on as we've come back and we got the Nerd Octax which has been going pretty steady for the past I think month since we set it up maybe and then the Zyber 8 is there and then lastly you can see the Avalon Nano over there sitting on the desktop still got the open case on it but that is still running and it's running on medium mode so trying to get a little bit best of both worlds in terms of the hash rate and the efficiency but currently this one on the nerd octax is sitting around 16 and i believe that the two nerd qx's up there are sitting at 17 joules per terahash zyber 8 is slightly higher just because it's not that efficient compared to both of these because these have newer generation chips on them so we're kind of moving into 2026 trying to obviously mine a solar block but we're also sticking to our mining of other coins as well and then we'll obviously update you if we hit any blocks and maybe we'll do like a monthly video of what we've actually hit over the month every month and then we can kind of compile it at the end of the year something like that but i'm just showing you this this is completely kind of unrelated to the rest of the video because in today's video, we're looking mainly at some of the data of solo miners over 2026. And this doesn't include all of the BitAx or Node QX models. So this is just solo mining blocks over 2026. I think the data has kind of been compiled together. And we can actually get a figure of how many of the blocks in the past year were actually hit by solo miners slash big mining farms, which are technically solo mining as well. So we have a lot of data on that that we're going to go through. And hopefully we can look forward to the future where we have more solo blocks overall on the Bitcoin network. And I think it's definitely a growing thing. We've already seen more bit axes. And as more of these miners come online, these solo miners, that means that the odds of one of them hitting a block goes up higher. So the more hash rate that it takes up of the network, the more chance or likelihood it is that it will be hitting blocks. So we expect to see at least six out of these solo miners across the year just based on today's hash rate and then maybe even a further six if the hash rate continues to increase with all of these miners being sold just want to mention you can still get 10 percent off the nerd octax or the nerd qx at powermining.io so you can head over to the link in the description and support the channel by buying through our referral link so i'll leave that link in the description but now let's head over to the computer and get into the video on solo mine blocks this year on the Bitcoin network or last year on the Bitcoin network. Okay, so just a quick update before we get into kind of what we're exploring in today's video. Let's look at what we are currently mining in terms of our hash rate. Currently, we have 22.79 hash rate overall on Bitcoin mining. And that brings us up to, well, these were just turned on to the nerd QXs. It was previously at 15, and that was the Avalon Nano, which is there. The Gamma Turbo, which is technically the Zyber 8. We just need to rename them. The Nerd Octax, the Nerd QX, and then the other Nerd QX. And then if we move over here, we have the Bitcoin Cash Mining, which currently has 5 terahash, and that is being split by the two Nerd QXs as well. So that's what we're currently working with. There are some working out on Digibyte for the smaller bit axes, but we'll show them or save them for a later video. That was just an update on what we're working with as we got back over the Christmas break. So today's video, we're talking about home and solo mining activity in the last three years. And we've actually seen a massive uptick in this. It's probably due to obviously Bitcoin's price increasing, but also because of the evolution or creation of the bit ax miner and these more higher terahash miners because previously you had those usb miners which were relatively good but they weren't really the best in terms of the hash rate and the odds were astronomically low they are still very low with a bit x or a new qx but with the usb miners they were very very low so what we're looking at here is basically a chart that was compiled by bitcoin data guy so check them out on twitter if you want to and this just goes through the network share. So you have that on the left side. So around 2.5% is the upper band. And then this line is just for the time. So you have from 2023 all the way up to 2026. You can actually see that there's the biggest spike technically 
in, I think, September, that would be, with most of it coming from Unknown and Ocean. So Ocean, if you didn't know, is kind of... It's not necessarily all going to be solo miners, because you could have a mining farm that is connected through Ocean. So there's a lot of people that do that, that have uh, multiple ASICs, and, you know, we're talking in the hundreds, which are guaranteed a block per year, that actually put it through Ocean. A lot of those people that are doing that type of solo mining or have solo mining farms out there, they can reliably hit blocks, maybe one or two or three a year, and they can offset the cost with that. And a lot of them go through Ocean, but they also go through their own nodes sometimes as well, so you wouldn't even be able to see it. And that's probably what the unknown is coming from as well. So it actually shows you basically all of the Bitcoin or 100 minus 2.5% of the Bitcoin is mined through pool mining overall. You can see unknown, which means that it can't be verified and it doesn't actually have a tag on the mempool. And then ocean, as I said, is kind of for bigger solo miners. And then you have cano pool, public pool and future bit. So those are solo mineable pools. And then this is also missing. And this also includes solo CK pool, but I think it's missing one like via BTC but this is probably also missing a couple of the blocks that have been hit solo, as a lot of the pools will offer you a solo option, but these are the main ones which only strictly go for solo mining. So that's how we get this figure and this data. As it says there, Bitcoin's decentralization is getting a lot stronger. So it's been, in the last three years, it's gone from, I don't know what that is, 0.25%, all the way up to 2.5%. So that's a 10 times increase in blocks hit by solo miners. And you can see it really starts to ramp up actually when you have the inception of the BitAx, which is around this time. I don't know if it's correlated at all, but a lot of people have moved over, or at least uh, relatively have moved into solo mining to their own machines and their own nodes overall. The share of home and small scale miners has climbed to 2.5% of the global hash rate in just 18 months. This isn't just noise, it's a structural shift powered by hobby miners. I do definitely expect this to go up further as time goes on as well. And then a look under the hood here, total share of home bl solo blocks in the last three years. The pool distribution is ocean at around 56%, so 605 blocks, which realistically isn't loads of blocks. You have 144 per day. So this only accounts for maybe a week's worth of blocks overall. And then you have unknown, untagged, and that can pretty much be anyone, but that also means that they're not mining into a pool. So that's definitely solo mined, as it's not actually strictly going through a pool. Then solo CK pool, cano pool, future bit, which is kind of their own ASIC miner slash node, all jumbled into one. And then public pool, which we've already seen two blocks from in the past. While solo mining CK pool captures the headlines, the majority of organizing in transparent pools like ocean mining. So that's a lot of the people that have probably a bigger farm, not necessarily us home miners. I think it would be industrial solo miners that have probably upwards of 20 ASICs that make it viable to actually solo mine Bitcoin with that amount of hash rate with the hopes of probably finding one to three blocks a year through that. The 30% unknown segment likely represents the silent majority of home miners valuing privacy. Whether you run S19 in the garage or a future bit on your desk, you are verifying your own work and hardening the network. So that's what we're talking about in unknown, where you don't necessarily project to the mempool where this actual block was hit. You don't actually tag it with anything. But if you're running Ocean or if you're running public pool on Umbrel or on Datum, then you will be tagged under ocean and then it falls into whatever you want to name it as your own tag but it will show you that you went through that software to actually have the block and then this is another post from compass mining 36 solo blocks were found in 2025 according to digital mining solutions these solo miners received whatever and on average that was three hundred seventeen thousand dollars. so i think that this is kind of skewed but it does say that half of them, basically 17, were mined via NiceHash, which if you don't know what NiceHash is, it's basically a hash rate renting service. So a lot of people, when they were mining or first getting into mining NiceHash, you probably run into quite a lot. 
but they're actually a hash rate marketplace as it says there where you can buy hash rate and point it towards whichever coin you want to so I don't know how these are actually hit on nice hash were they hit through rented hash rate or was it people actually mining in because there is two sides of it you can actually mine to nice hash or you can put up your hash rate for rentals so it's kind of a go between the both of them and we did this when we first started out with Bitcoin mining or solo Bitcoin mining. We stuck our gamma, I believe, onto nice hash to mine Casper coin, I think it was at the time. But if you guys want a tutorial on how to hook up your miner to nice hash, I don't recommend it, but if you want a tutorial, I can show you how to. It's probably the first thing that you run into when you first start mining cryptocurrency. But even with one peta hash, you can earn $39 per day. So that's what they're saying. You can connect your miners to NiceHash Marketplace and earn Bitcoin for every share that you connect into. Or you have the mining side, which is just you want to mine. So you have a live marketplace. If we go here and we click buy hash rate, you can see the price for hash rate that's available. And then the total available speed is 174 terahash. And then in the EU, it's obviously dependent on what node you want to point it towards. But let's just say that we wanted to rent out our TerraHash. We could rent it out for, I don't know how much we would have overall if we added it all together, maybe 20 TerraHash. So if we go on here, that's what it is per day. And then we would times that by, let's just say 30 TerraHash. So that's BTC per TerraHash per day. And then that's the limit. And then that's the miners. I'm not quite sure how this works in terms of the orders, but I don't know, maybe we'll make a video on it because I haven't fully explored the hash rate marketing or because I haven't really explored the hash rate market in terms of renting out your rigs, but it doesn't look like many people actually do it by here. I don't know why there'd be 184 miners at one terahash, or maybe that's 184 terahash overall. We'll still have to do some research into that. Oh, that's for script. That's the reason that we're not seeing it for SHA-256. I think it would be with ASIC boost as well. So you have 5.3 exahash available, and then you can see the speed in exahash. So I don't know how much our conversion would be, but it probably wouldn't be that much in exahash if we're looking here. But these are orders that have happened in the past, I guess, to try and mine Bitcoin solo blocks. And then they also have a, if we go back, they also have an easy mining way, which is kind of like cloud mining, where you buy a certain amount of hash rate for a certain amount of time, and then it tries to find a block. But I'm not really too interested in doing that. But if you guys want to see a video on nice hash, I can make one. I don't really think that it's going to be useful for you guys if you are solo mining, because you'd rather do it through your own one. But if you're talking about market or hash rate rentals, then this could be an easy way to actually earn BTC. So it does show you there the average prices right here for 0.1 exahash per day for 24 hours. You can earn 3,911. They're probably doing some arbitrage on it as well. So just be wary of that. That you're probably not gonna get that amount. And then you can also do it for script. So one terahash and then Kapow for Ravencoin, which is a GPU mineable coin. If you have a thousand or if you have one terahash, you can rent it out for that much. And then this is how it goes. So you have a miner, miner gets paid from the buyer and then the hash rate provided to join any pool. So I'm assuming that's how some of these solo mined blocks were actually mined is through people renting it and trying to hit a block on that. And then we have this from solopool.com, which is a kind of a nice UI to look at. So you have uh, peta hash which is a pool hash rate which is actually a pool and then pool stats if we go here you can see main net how many blocks they've got how much peta hash they have how what their best round is so 89t and then a bunch of other things as well i think they have a list on here if we go home you can see here current block network hash rate miners workers blocks found one so they've found one as well which is up here, but that was done by an S19 XP. But that looks like a lot of workers online to actually try and hit that block. So that's what I was talking about at the start of the video. It's mainly 
a lot of these unknowns or the ones that are on ocean and probably solo sea cable come from miners like this where they have around where they have a couple of petahash that is mining away and that kind of guarantees them a block within a certain amount of time it's normally under a year to make the ROI pretty good but you can see that they're mining with S19s or S19 Pros on there you have some ant miners S21XPs CG miners which are typically going to be the Avalon series you have the Apollo BTC bit X by here and then unknowns as well by there let's see if you can find any other ones node QX and a couple of others so that's kind of what you're dealing with when you see all these solar blocks that are coming through as I said this is kind of just a throwaway video just to let you know how they're actually being calculated show you some information on solo Bitcoin mining and show you some of the solo devices that we're working with currently so let me know your thoughts on that if you want me to make a video on nice hash I can always do that let me know in the comments make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this